for more on the humanitarian crisis generated by the quakes and what best can be done to help alleviate the situation. Let's speak to Awasim Kamaja. He's head of global programs at Action for Humanity and joins us from Manchester. Awasim, it's still less than 24 hours since the quake struck. What is most urgently needed? And talk, us, uh, talk to us about the window of survival. Thank you so much for hosting Action for Humanity for to speak about this uh, disaster. So less than 24 hours right now, if I will speak out from a uh, CR perspective, uh, the health directorate, they are calling uh, for emergency response because they are run out from the consumables, from the serums, from uh, fuel to, to for the generators because the electricity is completely shut down inside Syria. Uh, it's over their capacity. It's flooded by by the injured and by the casualties. So this is one of the top uh, top uh, priorities inside Syria right now. More than 900 casualties, thousands of, of people injured, thousands of people still are missing. That's why we can't give a very accurate uh, number of the of the people have been affected by this earthquake. Uh, people right now, they are completely outside their houses, damage it uh, in this very harsh winter, uh, w winter and weather condition as well. People they are freezing outside. The same situation in Turkey, uh, for example, Antakya, Hatay, where there is uh, a majority of Syrian refugees, uh, it's completely destroyed. Uh, one of the building is completely damaged. It, it has a lot of people there. We, as Action for Humanity, we lost two of our staff inside Syria, and one of is is my deputy country director. He lost his his mother, his two nephew, and his uh, and his brother in law. So the situation is very chaotic. Uh, even the hospitals in in Turkey completely uh, unfunctional now because the casualty injured it's over the capacity. Uh, some of the area right now, they are waiting for the civil defense to start looking for the survivals and the disrubbles. So this is the situation for now. Well, see, the accounts are, are so frightening. Some people saying they were heading back into their apartments when they felt a large aftershock, one of hundreds of aftershocks. What danger do these subsequent tremors pose to the rescue effort on the ground? To be honest, as I said, the situation is very chaotic. Hundreds of people, they refuse to go back to their houses. Uh, some of the houses partially damage it, even if it could be as a refuge for these family, but still it's cold because there is no warm places. Uh, all my staff right now, more than 50, 50 staff with their family, with their kids are uh, in their cars, very far away from any buildings. So you can imagine uh, the threat so some of the humanitarian staff either they completely frightened and shocked by the repetitive aftershock. I can confirm that one hour, 20 minutes before uh, another aftershock with 7.2 magnitude just uh, hit uh, Syria and, and, and the, the, the southwest of Turkey. And Wasim, it's the strongest earthquake to hit Turkey since 1939. Syria is also dealing with a snowstorm, sure. you mentioned the cold conditions. These aren't events you can really prepare for, are they? How equipped are Turkey, Turkey and Syria to deal with this? To be honest, if, if we can segregate, Turkey is very, uh, from infrastructure perspective, from, uh, from uh, uh, resources, human resources perspective, it's very equipped and, and, and used to these uh, earthquake, uh, I can mention that last year uh, it was a less heavy earthquake in Izmir, but now the situation is very chaotic. I think it's beyond all of the resources. In Syria, it's a different story. The infrastructure completely destroyed since 12 years, and uh, and more than 4 million refugees are, uh, or IDPs, internal displaced persons, are in the northwest Syria. So they are already under tents, and the situation is very fragile and vulnerable for these people, displace it, and with the earthquake and with this uh, weather condition, the situation became much worse, uh, and that's why no health facilities are fully equipped to, to absorb 
this earthquake in Syria, uh, the staff themselves, they are fully concerned about their family. Uh, one of the nurse working with us in the mobile clinic on her way to, to provide assistance for these IDP camps, uh, she, she just passed away. Uh, so that's why even, even the staff, uh, now they are in terrible situation. Uh, between trying to respond to the crisis itself and in the same time worried about their family, their relatives, etc. Uh, the WHO says emergency medical teams have been activated to provide essential health care for the most vulnerable. But even before this quake, Wasim, officials were grappling with a cholera outbreak in the region. How big of a concern is disease outbreak in a situation like this? As you mentioned, as you mentioned, so the waterborne disease such as the cholera, etc., was spread in northwest and in northeast Syria. And uh, technically, with 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 the damage, so the sewer system, the water facilities, the clean water will not be that much available, which which could be the 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 source of more waterborne disease in these uh, circumstances after after the earthquake. Uh, in addition, uh, even before the earthquake. For for the weather condition, uh, the the airport in Istanbul, uh, more than six hundred flights has been cancelled for the weather condition. So now with the earthquake, uh, the the situation even for the airport to receive a foreign assistance or foreign staff to support in Syria or in Turkey with with the situation of the airport, etc., it, it became so so fragile and challenging. Uh, the same thing in Syria. If we take it from cross-border resolution and provide provide the the, the humanitarian assistance through cross-border, so it's somehow challenging because most of the roads infrastructure are completely blocked right now. So that's why uh, it's a little bit challenging and make the situation in the next 48 hours a little bit challenging till things get more resettled and we can find out a proper plan how to do this. So WHO, UN, OCHA, UNICEF, all of the international organizations, including Action for Humanity, they are doing their best. They set up uh, some uh, uh, temporary shelter for the people inside Syria who left who 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 left their houses or who they who, who lost their houses. We are providing food assistance, ready to eat parcel. We are providing uh, NFI kits, non-food items kits, blankets, mattresses, plastic sheet uh, mattresses. Uh, so all what we can do. In Turkey, everything is centralized through AFAD, which is a government institution. They are the one who who, who helping with all of these uh, destruction in Turkey. So uh, only the government institution can deal in Turkey. However, we having the the the, the possibility to work directly in Syria. Right, Wasim, thank you very much for your expertise this morning. Wasim Kamaja from Action for Humanity.